Hello and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. On our program today, it is a very exciting program as always, but we are taking time out this week to look at our country uh, from a different perspective. Uh, so often in our country, the national heroes, as we'd like to call them, uh, are politicians. I found it strange that the, the heroes and those who are celebrated as nation builders are chosen by politicians, and no wonder why quite often they are politicians. But truth is, uh, history will say that that's not necessarily right or accurate in terms of how we, the people that shape uh, our country's future and, and its history. In fact, uh, many of the great leaders of our country that brought about some of the greatest changes were, in fact, spiritual leaders, community leaders, and in fact, many of our politicians came out of the community leadership business, if you can say that. Um, even in the United States, uh, it's noted uh, former President Barack Obama was uh, someone who hailed himself and was hailed widely known as a community builder and a community leader. And so today on our program, we <clears throat> will be having a discussion with someone that I have determined is in fact a nation builder. After all, this is nation building, and we are taking a focus from uh, the past two years of mainly focusing on political leaders to focusing on the real nation builders and those who impact our country and communities at a local level. And so we're going to get into a discussion with, with our guests, which I will introduce to you after the break. Uh, and so we'll take this break and come right back. Being awarded a free live phone in the Making A's Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I used my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good, oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Ally from my new phone. Thanks Ally, my name is Kara Snows, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in best. the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Who said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price? If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Like to try our chunk. I only come in here for two hours. Okay, items. but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me do it. Okay. 
Jamaica Bahama Imports always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo juice today. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I am here today having a discussion with a nation builder, uh, someone who hails from Grand Bahama and who has worked extensively in that community, um, doing some things that I think will be an inspiration to most of you, pretty much all of you watching across the nation. In fact, what he does is what is needed in our country to, to remedy many of the social challenges. And so it takes me great pleasure in presenting to the Bahamas, Mr. Dudley Said. Dudley, welcome to Nation Building, Mr. Said. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being on your show, uh, Mr. Penno. We, uh, we, we, we brought you here today, and as I said in my intro, um, you are a nation building, a nation builder, uh, someone who has worked extensively over the years um, in helping to uh, shape or reshape our, our community, working with young people. And I noted that you are an alumni of Eight Mile Rock, uh, well, Lewis Yard Primary School, Hawksville High School. Um, you're from Eight Mile Rock originally. I want you to take some time to share with the country um, uh, before we get into the, the work that you are doing, this, uh, which is so important to, to nation building to take some time and talk about um, your background. Um, and I'm sure for those watching, uh, just like my name, Pinnock, you're Said. Uh, talk to us about where um, your ancestors are from um, and your beginnings. Uh, Mr. Pinnock, uh, my mother and father uh, came from Haiti. Uh, my mother came on a boat to come over to the Bahamas. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud of them. Uh, and, and to have both parents from a, from a different country, uh, we grew up about nine of us in a one bedroom, uh, no light. Uh, uh, we had to use candles to do our homework. But what I always saw was a striving uh, woman uh, who, loved, who loved her kids. And my father is a taxi driver. Of, uh, he's deceased. Uh, he's a taxi driver. And I came under, you know, watching him, you know, every morning getting up for work. But, uh, but I always could tell that uh, they always wanted to make a difference mm -hmm. in this uh, country because my mom helped a lot of people uh, while I was growing up. A lot of folks who probably uh, didn't have no food. So, and I, and I watched that growing up. And, and watching my father get up every day with a station wagon uh, had a hole in the bottom of it, but he took pride on, on his work, uh, getting up every day, driving that, that taxi uh, here in Grand Bahama. So, so um, le le let's, let's um, put a little more substance to this um, history. Your mom and dad, like many other migrants from Haiti, um, came here um, what year was that? Do you, did uh, they share this? When they came over was in the early 50s. Okay. Uh, when they came over. So yeah. they, they came to the Bahamas in the early 50s and they settled where? Settled right in Eight Mile Rock where I was born. A lot of folks don't realize I was born in Eight Mile Rock. Right. So you're a Grand Bahamian. Grand Bahamian, yes. Uh, but I think the difference is I born in the 60s. I think uh, if, I, if I was born in the 70s, I would have been caught up in what we call a lot of Bahamians today. Uh, uh, don't, uh, they still Sta stateless? say stateless? Stateless. But, but uh, you know, we talk about this, we've talked about this extensively. In fact, I've had um, guests, foreign affairs minister and others 
who have shared with this, there's a lot of ignorance there. Truth be told, uh, myself, I was born in West End, Grand Bahama, and my parents, both parents are Jamaicans. Um, I was born, like yourself, before independence, and so all of us are, was, is, our status became, um, we, we became Bahamians at birth, and didn't have to wait until you're 18 to acquire your citizenship. Mm -hmm. And the ignorance I've found over the years because of my own history is that um, people are not not Bahamians because they weren't born yes. in that time zone. The issue is that the, the, at the time, it was unreasonably so, it was accepted that if you were born in the Bahamas to foreign parents, um, that the parents would want their children to take their nationality. And so it was assumed by the framers that if you're born to foreign parents, that up, upon attaining the age of 18, you then can decide that you want to be a Bahamian citizen. And if you don't, then you are not automatically entitled. Whereas children like yourself, like myself, born to foreign parents prior to independence was automatically granted citizenship. Yes. So I think a lot of uh, Haitian descendants and others who have not, um, and uh, they haven't claimed their right to their citizenship within the age limit that was given, I think it's between 18 and 21. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the issues occur. Um, and so I just wanted to bring a little clarity yeah, to yeah. the fact that um, there, there is a significant body in the country that falls in that group, and it's hoped uh, as for many years, and successive governments have attempted to deal with it, and for some reason haven't, and it's hoped that uh, that would be resolved. But you were born to foreign parents. You were born in, in, in Eight Mile Rock. You grew up in the rocks. Um, tell us a little about your upbringing, some of the experiences you had that shaped you, and also, um, did you get in trouble? In your early days, yeah, uh, uh, growing up in Lewis Yard, it was a it was a good experience in Lewis Yard Primary. Uh, Lewis Yard Primary, uh, I uh, want to thank Miss Renee Russell, Miss Wright. They never uh, showed the difference if you uh, have Haitian parents or or Bahamian uh, kids. They they treat all of us equal. Mm -hmm. uh, but when is I, she still alive? Yeah, both right. of them are still her, alive. Her, she's she's well hailed. She's well. Uh, applauded by many in the community yeah. for her work. Yeah, they, they, mm -hmm. uh, they never showed any difference. Uh, but growing up when I get in the high school, uh, still was the same. Uh, most of my friends, they never, you know, saying, hey, you from Haiti or, or that. Uh, so high school was, was pretty good. Funny so, enough, um, I, I talked to a lot of uh, friends in Grand Bahama who came from, their parents came from Turks and Caicos, and the stories I heard at, at that time in the 60s and 8 Mile Rock was that if your parents from TI, you know, you were seen as Turks Island, and it was, it was um, several friends that I have that are Bahamians that has that, have that background talk about their own experiences. So it's interesting that you, you didn't quite experience yeah, that. Yeah, I think back then, you know, uh, all, all my friends was, you know, they never look at you any different. So I think that helped a lot. Was there, was there a significant uh, amount of immigrants uh, and children born to immigrants at the time in, yeah, in at, at the Rock time, and in Louisiana. Yeah, area? I think the biggest struggle is anytime you're getting ready to start a new class, and uh, teachers used to ask, "Hey, what's this? What's this surname?" Right. And when you had to say it and say where you're from, then the kids used to giggle a bit. Right. But uh, the people who were close to me never never showed me any difference. Right. Uh, but when I reached in the 12th grade, still was okay. But when I came out of school, that's when I made some bad mistakes. Okay. Uh, that's when I fall in what you call the gang era, the 80s, fast money, trying to make a quick buck. Mm -hmm. So I got caught up in, in, those, in that lifestyle. What exactly? Did you ever get charged? Did you ever get arrested? Uh, I, I've been very blessed. I must say, I never got charged for no. So you got a, you got away with a lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense is correct. But uh, what happened is true. Uh, my affiliation with uh, guys who deal drugs, uh, I got stabbed. I got stabbed. How se severely? I got stabbed seven times. Uh, seven different occasions. Same night, I got stabbed seven times. Uh, 
and missed my juggler vein by one inch, uh, my heart by one inch, and I got shot at the same night. And my uh, then wife today was in the home. They tie her up. They put a gun to my son head right now. He's 30 years old. And my sister. And for that split second, uh, I said to myself, uh, because of the bad choices that I made, that meant I could have caused everybody death. And the Lord spared me. And, uh, and, and, and I said that night, I said my last prayer. I said, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Uh, and he had the gun to my head and gone click. And I said, he didn't shoot me. So I, I fought them. And when I started the fight, I end up, uh, they ended up running and, and got, got out. And that made... We're going we're gonna to get um, deeper. That's a very, very interesting story and a uh, very telling one. You're watching Nation Building. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, would you like to try our chunk? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just, just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me do it. Okay, thank you. Wait, it looks like flatter seam. Do the shuffle. Shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. I got to shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's that? Junk no juice medley. Jamaica Bahama Imports, always got it. Come on down and get your chocolate juice today. Being awarded a free live moon in the Making A's Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I use my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good. Oh my gosh. There was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Eli from my new phone. Thanks Eli. My name is Kara Snowles, owner of the Balloon Princess, and I believe in best. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. It's the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all of their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I'm here today with Mr. Dudley Said. Mr. Said is the president of Reach Out Ministries in Grand Bahama, and Dudley Said is well known in the Grand Bahama community for the work that he has done over many decades now 
um, reaching young people, uh, transforming lives, and I will give him an opportunity to share a little more about what he has done to be a nation builder. Um, you were talking about the night that your words, the Lord delivered you from uh, your nefarious activities in gang and drugs and all the rest of it and launched you into being, I uh, gave you the impetus to, to start Reach Out, I guess? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so, so walk us quickly from that experience that night, after that night. Uh, did, you, did you make a commitment to God immediately or did that happen later? No, I said that once he spared my life, I said, you know, God, if you spared me tonight, because I thought I was dead, then I, then I will do your work. Mm -hmm. Then I sat down, uh, I think about a month or two ago. I said, he saved me for a reason. Uh, so I started my work uh, originally in the Garden Village area. Normally it's the ghetto. Mm, that's uh, in Freeport. In Freeport. Mm -hmm. I started uh, basketball. But uh, when I started the basketball, uh, some of the young boys came up to me and said, hey, we don't have no lunch money. Uh, we don't have no uniform. Then I say, hey, hey, I, I, I didn't really come here for all of this. Then the, 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 the organization has changed automatically when I started to hear the concerns and the needs of those young boys in the Garden Village community. So once you recognize that you would not be able to just go and tell them about God and all these and give them a good talk and they had needs, what exactly did you do? Uh, we went back. I sat down with my wife and I said, hey, this is real now. Uh, it's, it's okay to just go in, go in that area and just talk, but there are some real needs. So we, so we started the organization. And uh, the first thing we did, we did a Christmas giveaway. Uh, what year was that? That was in 2008. We started a Christmas giveaway. So just to be clear, the organization Reach Out started of, of originally when? In 2008. Okay. We started originally in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we just did a basketball tournament, then we started a Christmas giveaway. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the kids start saying, this is the first time I ever got a Christmas toy, the kids in the Garden Village community. So we end up doing a back to school giveaway in the Garden Village community also, where we give about six or 700 backpacks. And uh, everything we did, we fed the kids, and they were saying this is the first time they had a hot meal. So I started a prison ministry. We brought, uh, in that same year, we brought about 15 kids to visit Her Majesty's prison. And, 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 and How now, old were these kids? We start from 11, uh, the kids, where we took the first year up to 17. And the ministry just took over uh, my life. Uh, I was driving taxi and I had to stop, literally stop, because parents was calling me and saying, my kids just got suspended. Uh, my, my son is in prison. I need you to go visit him. And, and the ministry that, that took, took over. And today, because we started that ministry, we have some young men today in college who from the Garden Village community, who people uh, said, but it never turned out to be nothing. So I saw the impact of uh, you know, going in there uh, before they pick up a gun. Oh, and like we tell them, try Jesus. That's our slogan when we tell those young, young boys. And we could tell the difference that the organization has made in that community. You talked about the needs that existed in the community. How did you fund those needs? You were a taxi driver after all. Um, not that taxi drivers don't make a good living because they do when, th when times are good, but how did you get funding to provide the many social support? Uh, what we did, we, went, we did a lot of cookouts. We went to a lot of small companies. Uh, but but uh, the first three years, nobody wanted to help assist, uh, but Focal King got on board. Farmer Camp came on board, a couple of those companies. Uh, I must say a big thank you to Mr. Ian Rowell. Mm -hmm. uh, Port Authority, Port Authority. Grandma, Port Authority. I sat with him once and I shared with him you know, my passion and my vision for changing the lives, uh, the young men's lives. And he, he literally said, hey, if you decide it, this is what you want to do, we will back you. And Mr. Rowell uh, uh, came on board from 2008 to, to 2018. He's still a part of my organization. Right. So over the last decade, um, you, outside of those that you mentioned, the, the, have you found, by the way, Reach Out is, has a headquarters in yeah. Grand Bahama. You want to tell the nation how did you go about acquiring that facility and having it built and 
Yeah, um, uh, first of all, I, I went to Mr. Roland tell him, you know, my vision is to, ha to have a, a center, no matter how a child smells or looks, they could come in. Because a, a lot of times they have centers around the country. If a child doesn't smell good, they won't allow them in. So in our center, don't care how you look, how you smell, we allow you to come in in our center. So, so, so pretty much um, you are catering primarily to children and young people from impoverished communities? Yeah, we call them in the city area, you know, in, in Grand Bahama, folks, uh, single parents. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the times, uh, a lot of, they don't have a lot, a lot of the basic needs. So we still, today, we provide uh, school clothes for the, for the kids, lunch. Uh, they could take a shower at our center. Uh, they have a computer center that you can use free of charge. Uh, anybody can come in at the center and use the center. Uh, and also we do a free breakfast every morning. We feed uh, about 80 to 100 kids every morning before they go to school and every once a month. We have a free feeding program where we feed about 100 folks in the community. It's just not only for the kids. Uh, the center is open to anybody. So, so ju just to be clear, let's uh, state for, the, for those watching and particularly across the country, but particularly in Grand Bahama and especially from the corporate community that may want to uh, help in your help in your cause in your efforts uh, where exactly is the center located and what is the contact phone number yeah mm -hmm. it's located uh number 83 banyan lane is uh, uh if anyone in grand bomb is familiar with redwood lane summit road is is, is located there. that that's near the cable bahamas, cable bahamas. facility uh, in the back of the, uh, uh, the movie theater is, is better right. r d theater People can find it easier at the R&D theater. Uh, my telephone number is 727-1229 uh, if anybody wants to contact me. And my email address is dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y dot say at gmail.com. Uh, we, we, we made a lot of appeal uh, to the wider community. Uh, I think if our organization is not around, people will really see how bad it really is in Grand Bahamas. So, so <laughs> with the impact that you said that your your um center is having on the community in the inner city in Grand Bahama. One would conclude, uh, assume that uh, government, not just the Port Authority, which you said has been uh, supporting, but that government would also chip in and uh, provide support to you. Have governments, uh, any recent government since you started um, chipped in in providing any financial or other support for the center? Uh, I'm still hoping for a grant from the government, that'll make it a bit easier. But I must say, I want to say a special thank you to, to then Hubert Ingram, the Prime Minister. Former Prime former Minister Former Prime Ingram. Minister, mm -hmm. yeah. He, he, he had a grant out for community, uh, for, for organization to do community work. And I got a grant, I think about 10 years ago from him under the then Minister of Sports, Charles Maynard. No, they deceased. got a grant. Yeah, deceased. And that's what helped me with the construction of, of the center starting to put the foundation together and all that. But now all our funding is gone, pretty much. But, but you, just to be clear, the, 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 where did you, you, where did you, you bought the land from a private individual? Uh, where do you get the I land? I was so blessed. Uh, Mr. Ian Rowe donated the, the, the land to us. Uh, it was a, a building that needed work. And uh, we, we took the challenge. Uh, so you restored a dilapidated the building? Dilapidated building, yeah. We took the challenge uh, and, and got it done. Uh, I went to Gold Rock. Gold Rock assists with, with giving me the, the, the slab for the back piece of it. And some, Mr. Pinder, there's a couple other small persons who assist. And today we have completed the, the center. Okay. So you were saying that you haven't gotten any tangible assistance since the former Ingram administration, I yes. think that was 2007 administration, yes. that, that yes. period there, the last uh, Ingram administration. Have you reached out to the previous government, the Christie administration, and the now Minis administration for help? Uh, I, I wrote the, the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Uh, normally that's where the funding normally come from. Uh, but it is, is uh, what I'm hoping still, although I wrote them. Have you gotten any response? Uh, no. And, what, what, with something so significant that you do, that is well known in the community, why do you think that government would have difficulty in partnering 
in, in, in uh, tangibly providing a tangible partnership, whether that's a grant, whether that's a, some other method of helping to, why would you think that would be a challenge? I'm, I'm not sure, uh, what I can honestly say, Mr. Pernod, we make the government job easier. Uh, we make it easier on crime, we make it easier for going back to school. Uh, I'm still trying to sell my organization. But you have, you have, sorry to keep interrupting, but I'm a little puzzled. Yes. You have five <clears throat> members of parliament in Grand Bahama. I believe three cabinet ministers. And I would, I struggle to think that you have, have you approached them individually to make your case to try? Because I mean, it takes an effort, not sometimes just writing won't get it done. Have you, have you done what you think uh, is enough to I, reach out to these I must say leaders? I know all of them personally. I know the minister for Grand Bahama personally. He's a deacon in and my And the minister of finance? Yeah, is, I, Peter, I know him. Uh, the finance, minister of finance yeah. is there. So he's, he's the one that controls the, the money yeah, purse? Yeah, and, and I know all those guys pretty so well. So why haven't you used that leverage to? Uh, I'm still waiting. <laughs> uh, and being honest, it hurts because... Uh, the work that I'm doing, it, 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 it saves lives. It, it, taking kids who normally have a one point grade average, now it's graduating from school. And now the reason why I'm saying this, if my work is visible in Grand Bahama, my heart goes out to the rest of youth organization in Grand Bahama. If I can't get funding from the government, so you can imagine the rest of those youth organizations that's behind me. So that is my real challenge, you know. Uh, I would love to be the voice for them because uh, if I can't get help, so you can imagine that, Mr. Pernock, there's a lot of other organizations in Grand Bahama making an impact also. Uh, and, I, and I think what the government needs to understand, without us, crime will go up in this country. I am a bit, still a bit puzzled. And I would challenge you, in fact, I will do what I can here to appeal to citizens of, of, of residents of Grand Bahama to reach out to your members of parliament um, to make an appeal on behalf of Mr. Said, uh, I think every resident, uh, every corporate citizen should, and we here at Nation Building will pledge our support to seeking to help, uh, help you cross those bridges where, where we can, because I think it's critical. I think more organizations like yours need to be set up across the country. Would, would, would hope that more individuals would find find it necessary to give back to the country and to the young people. You know, there's always this talk. I've heard this since I was a boy growing up in Nassau Village. And that is, the talk was, the children are our future. And it's the young people are the future of the nation and all that. I see very little evidence of the more senior people, whether it's in political leadership, uh, even in the church and spiritual leadership, making significant room to raise up the next generation. Here you are, uh, not just a voice, but actually demonstrating that kind of community service and nation building support to your community. And you're struggling because of lack of support and funding. While it's noted, and you have said that government haven't done anything since the last Ingram administration, nothing to financially to support your organization, it begs a question. Is it an issue of you not being able to prove your, what you organizations, yours and such as yours, organizations, what you do with the funding that you receive? Is, is there any question? Do you have an accounting firm, for example, that, that, that um, can speak, monitor your books and can, can say, look, the monies that Reach Out receives, if they're corporate citizens that donate, or if the government is going to contribute, uh, d this is what the money is used for. Uh, do you think that may be a challenge if that's, is that in place? Uh, I do, I have it. What I, what I always do, Mr. Pennock, is every check that comes into Reach Out Youth Organization, I copy it. Everything that comes into our organization, we have a, we have a book from since 2008. The reason why I did that is any time I'm challenging anyone to come and ask for my books, and it's there for them. But, but, but just, to, just to say this, and I'm encouraging you if you don't have it, as you go out aggressively now to, ch to, 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 to the government and to corporate citizens, I'm encouraging you to ensure that you know you can get accounting firms or an accountant to, 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 to volunteer 
Um, these are not things for an organization such as yours that you'll pay for. You can seek accounting firms to assist you by providing accountability yeah. so that if there is proper accounting records, uh, you can come to a corporate citizen, any corporate citizen, or to the government and say, look, here's our budget for the year. It's 100000 or whatever it is. And this is what we're doing with the money. This is, the sta this is money that's paid mm -hmm. for paid staff because you, you need staff and you, you've dedicated yourself to the mm -hmm. facility. And so obviously you have responsibility. So people, I mean, yourself and those who are full-time in, in, in your work have to receive a reasonable salary. And in fact, the Bible supports mm -hmm. that. But I think that it is important from my own experience uh, being a corporate, uh, having a company and, and making corporate contributions myself, that, you, that companies or the Bahamas government would want to know that when they donate monies to organizations, the funds are being used. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to uh, digress too far here, but just to reemphasize the point and strengthen it, uh, even unions in the country have been challenged over the years with this issue of accountability and funding. And so my challenge to you, sir, for this 2018 is to seek to ensure that you tighten up the accountability side of Reach Out Ministry. I think that will go a long way in strengthening your case as you go out to see corporate funding. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for that also, Mr. Penoff. Uh, when I sacrificed, I think, 10 years of my, uh, you know, hard labor without getting paid, pretty much. Uh, Mr. Rose sat me down. Uh, I think the hurricane in 2016, I volunteered my service. Uh, when you had the hurricane, I took about 15 young men, ran out and cleaned up, cleaned up Grand Bahama. And because of that, uh, the Grand Bahama Port Authority and Sanitation kept me on. Uh, today I'm working with them, with the cleanup of Grand Bahama, uh, because uh, I live in Grand Bahama. So you, just to be clear, you are now an employee of the sanitation. Sanitation, teachers. yeah. Uh, so uh, what that did also, Mr. Pennock, is uh, like you said, accountability. Uh, I'm working uh, now after the, the organization has stabilized itself a bit. Uh, but but the, the, the challenge that I'm still having is, like you said, a question. Uh, and that's all of us who, who, who uh, sacrifice time an effort. If you, if I work full time for Reach Out, uh, I think the wider community still struggle with a person doing this type of work and being paid. Uh, we need to, like you say, how you clean the air now. But that we need to figure out a way for people to understand. Uh, say five thousand dollars come in, almost four thousand dollars goes back out to needs in a wider community of Grand Bahama. I, I think there is a cultural problem in the country, and in fact, it happens in churches as well where as a people, we still believe that people who do work for the kingdom of God and people who do these charitable things should do them uh, to give their time. Uh, truth be told, uh, too many of us are not ourselves uh, dedicating more of our time to, um, to these efforts. And I, again, pledge publicly today to uh, increase whatever support I've had the opportunity to give to your organizations and other organizations such where we contribute to helping because we, I recognize certainly as a, as a citizen that you, we, many of us in business and we, we're busy doing other things, making money, and we may not be able to give as much as, as of our time as we would like to even though we still need to participate because, I mean, money doesn't replace the actual body of being, of investing yourself uh, in touching lives and bringing about transformation and change. So I, 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 I again want to reiterate, I think you need to redouble your efforts to reach out to corporate citizens, but make sure you have an accounting firm that at least is committed to moving forward to, to, to be able to verify and to be able to stand behind your organization because it is a good organization and it's doing great work in the community. Um, how about, you talked about after school programs, um, providing, feeding kids daily. Uh, talk to us a little about the, the support you get from uh, citizens, uh, residents of your community in actually participating in helping the community, helping reach out. Uh, so 
who are the people who provide, who cook, who come to train these kids to, who? who? Uh, I take my hat off to my wife. Uh, I, she does everything pretty much. She runs the office right now. She, she do the breakfast every What's morning. What's her name, by the way? Katie Sage. Okay. She runs the breakfast every morning at 5 a.m. every morning. For the kids. So it's her ministry. She has yeah, a passion much, for yes, that as yeah, well. for cooking. Uh, she runs the office for us also. So bef before we go to the break, and, and hats off to her, is there other residents who are heavily involved, or are you looking and appealing We're for We're still looking, but we have Chantel Murray. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Ms. Russell. We have Faisito Wallace. We have so much, so much volunteers uh, normally assist us uh, with, our, with our programs. Okay, and you are looking for more. Still looking for more. So if you, if you are in Grand Bahama and you have a passion for reaching your community, touching lives, and saving um, children from turning to crime and, and other activities that's not wholesome and helping to turn around lives, then you certainly, I certainly want to encourage you to contact Mr. Said at Reach Out. Uh, you're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we'll be right back in our final segment after these messages. Who said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price? If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Free Live Phone in the Making Age Page campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I used my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good, oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alive for my new phone. Thanks Alive, my name is Kara Snows, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in best. Chunk, I only come in here for two hours. Okay, items. but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way. Let me show you. Okay. Thank you. Wait, I'm glad to see you. Do the shopping. It's been a while, do the shuffle. <laughs> do the shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's Junk this? Junkanoo Juice Medley. That's it, that's it, that's it. Give me some more, give me some more. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo Juice today.
Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we're here today talking to a nation builder. We're talking to Mr. Dudley Said, who is the president of Reach Out uh, Ministries in Grand Bahama. It's really a community center that does so much in impacting and transforming the lives of young Bahamians in Grand Bahama. Um, Mr. Said, in this final segment, Let's talk about the God factor. You talked about your transformation in the first segment, what made you in the first instant, uh, your life being spared, having been involved in crime, uh, turn to the Lord, you said, and to begin this process of um, what turned out to be a great renewal of, of, of impacting lives and transforming lives and saving lives. Um, what, through the process of developing this organization and impacting lives, how much of it is the needs you physically meet as opposed to the imp spiritual impact on these lives? Uh, it is both. Uh, the, the spiritual impact is showing them, you know, uh, there's a better way. Uh, and I think what happened is a lot, of, a lot of the young people don't want no one to push Jesus on them. They want to see it pretty much. Uh, they want to see uh, if, if you could tell them that your life had been turned around and they could see it and, and, and then they say they'll, they'll take a chance on giving Christ a chance. Most of the times when people push religion on them, they say, hey, hold on, you never walk where I walk. And I think, uh, and I think uh, uh, with me making mistakes like I did and showing them that God is the real answer because at times they'd be, they be struggling out there uh, don't know where to turn, and I always tell them, man, give God a chance. And, and, and that works a lot with those young boys. But they need it, they need it, they hear it from someone uh, who walks like them, who talks like them pretty much. So, so uh, I have seen a change in a lot of them. What I call a success to most of those guys, if they ain't die, that's one. Uh, if they ain't in prison, that's two. Uh, a lot of people call it success for those young boys who are sitting on the blocks. It's college, but if they live, uh, Mr. Pennock, and knowing that, you know, uh, it's life after death, and that's what I pretty much always sit down and, and, and let these young boys know. Uh, again, I, I skipped some stuff, Mr. Pennock. I, uh, life wasn't easy for me. The day my son is sitting in a majesty's prison through, uh, while I was doing my program, accused for murder. So sit at home with me also, Mr. Penner. So, so let me ask you, just to be a devil's advocate here, for, for those who would say, you are busy transforming lives and running a ministry, how did one of your own slip through the crack? How do you square that? With yeah, it, it, it is a process that's difficult, uh, Mr. Pennock, because why? My son was, was sitting in prison today. His name is Dudley Sage. So it was a time where I wanted to put my head in the sand and hide. But I did, said, did you fail while you were out reaching the community? Did you fail uh, no. to reach I, your own? I, I'd say no. I can tell you why, Mr. Pennock. I always sit down with my own kids. Um, and I sat down with him, tell him, hey, listen, if you make bad mistakes, what will happen? Uh, and a lot of people don't realize when the police was looking for him, I turned him in. I said, they're looking for you, son. I got to turn you in. So uh, uh, although it looked like to many people that I, that I feel, but I think, again, anytime you, you, you sit down with your kids and tell them the truth, uh, what I call a failure, if I, if I was doing all that and never sat down with my kids, my, sit, my kids are involved in my ministry. I sit them down all, I love my kids. The one How many the, kids do you have? I have five boys, okay. and I love all of them. Uh, uh, all will never turn out to be good, and I think that's what helped me keep on pushing on, Mr. Penner, because I have one sitting down in a Majesty's prison. I'm not one of those person who, who's sugar-coated, who's hiding behind and say, hey, it can't happen to me. I know what parents are feeling, and that's why I will not stop, uh, Mr. Pennock, until we change the mindset of these young men out there. Uh, and the biggest problem we have in, uh, they can't see enough of you, Mr. Pennock, enough of good men. What they're seeing is guys who, who pulling them and say, hey, you want some money? Look at this. And, and that's my goal out there. So, which, which, which brings me to a, a very, very important point. Men's ministry impact. While you do your work in your community, is, 
is there any effort from your end or any of your affiliates to, uh, to target men? Because we, we know, it's studied, it's a fact, that our country, one of the greatest challenges that we have is uh, raising up men to lead in our country and to be responsible and to understand purpose and life and meaning and so that they can pursue what God has created them for. And so with that said, is there a passion for developing men? Is there a program? What is going on in, in that aspect of your work? Is there? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a passion because we're losing them. Uh, but what are you physically doing, tangibly doing, we, we to target? Them, we, we, we mentor those young boys. Uh, I try my best to meet with them. Try my best to find a job for them. Uh, but the, the thing is, Mr. Pennell, um, the I say the devil, the enemy, is almost winning this battle because of uh, they can't see enough of us, Mr. Pennell. Good men. How do we get, as you say, more of us? See what happened is, Mr. Pennell. To show up. Everybody wants to sit on the sideline and just just talk. The boy, they want to see us. Well, let's get very practical. Mm -hmm. What can happen tomorrow in Grand Bahama for men, as you say, like us, to step forward and to do something to bring about a change? I, I, I say that in the backdrop of this. I visited uh, over the summer, visited Jamaica, and saw a very prominent religious uh, spiritual leader there who got the churches together, something that I don't see happen very often here, unfortunately, mm -hmm. got the churches together, went into the inner city, and got uh, 3,000 young men, brought them out to watch uh, the Soccer World Cup, fed them, entertained them, brought uh, young men who were once gangbangers and so forth to come and to share, much like the, some of the things that used to happen here in Nassau in the 90s and, and therefore with, with Pastor Dave Bars of BFM and there are others, um, who brought these young men together. And at the end of it, I visited that, 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 that event, I was invited, and at the end of the event, um, about 70%, just on the shy of three quarters of them, went up to commit their lives to the Lord. I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in talking with the organizer, uh, the pastor who is the lead organizer for that, he shared how they got corporate citizens to come to provide funding to do much of what they did. And so I'm saying that to say to you, which leads me to a question, have you traveled? Have you gone overseas and exposed yourself to other countries, other places that are challenged as we are, to see what they're doing and what some might have done to, to bring yeah, about change? Uh, yeah, I'm an alumni of the U.S. Embassy. They, they sent me away 2013. I did a program for three weeks. I went to New Orleans. I went to uh, Detroit and different uh, cities in America. And we actually doing the same thing they're doing. The only difference they have, they haven't funding. Mm. And, and the lack of funding is, is, the, is the key. Is the key. Uh, I do a conference every year. I have about 800 young boys. But if I could have more funding, I'll do more of that than mentor those kids. I, I, I am going to make a personal commitment to you and to the country that I will do all I can to help to not only support your effort, but also to see if we can get other corporate citizens to, to help drive and see if we can't get the citizens, which you the citizens, to uh, talk to your members of parliament, especially in Grand Bahama, <laughs> to give Mr. Said support. We, government pledges to fix crime. One of, the re, one of the methods in helping, I'll go in a long way, in dealing with crime issues is supporting organizations such as Reach Out. Last question I have for you today before we wrap up is, there's been a lot of talk about the fact that the crime problem that we have, not only here in the Bahamas, but generally speaking, is a direct result of poverty. What say you? Does, does poverty really drive crime or not? Not really, no. What happened is, Mr. Pennell, uh, the young men today, they make up in their mind, they're not gonna live that long. So that's what's going on really here in this country. What I cannot believe no government have never sat down with me Carlos Reed, or anybody else who's doing this type of work. Uh, they out there saying- Never sat down? Nope. Not to we, your knowledge. We, we have never sat down, they never sat down with me and Carlos Reed together and said, hey, hey fellas, I need your help. Uh, they might sit down with Carlos Reed by himself, 
uh, but never sat us down again and said, hey guys, I know you all guys are on the ground. And there are others out there, I'm sure. Yeah, down roll, uh, being carried. There's so much other folks doing the same work. Uh, even Mr. Norris Bain, all of us, they have never sat down with us and said, hey, I need y'all help just to fight this crime problem. What happened is everyone done, done put up in their mind, okay, the police could do it. The police no, no, keep that's, a fa that's a fail effort. Yeah. We've spent too much money doing that, and that's why I'm pledging that I will ask. And when I ask the Minister of National Security, the government, My corporate, buddy. corporate citizens to get involved in helping organizations such as yours and others, and if they don't do it, I'm going to come and publicly say that they've refused mm -hmm. to. Mr. Said, <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on our program today. It's a departure from the norm, but we're talking real issues, and we want to transform this country and this is what it's all about, building a nation. So thank you so much. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, I want to thank you for watching this broadcast this week. Stay tuned for next lively and exciting and educational program next week on Nation Building. And as always, have a great week. awarded a free live phone in the Making A Space campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I used my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good, oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alive for my new phone. Thanks Alive, my name is Kara Snowles, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in Bess. It's the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all of their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, would you like to try our chunk? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me show you. Okay, thank you. Wait, I'm glad to see you. Shuffle. shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. Oh, I got to do shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's that? Junkanoo no juice medley. That's it. Come on. 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 Come Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. I've been a customer for the past two years and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip. 
So that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touch land, we're here. So it was very, it was very good. And I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate Alive for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. <laughs>